I've told the story of Ozyman, Jackson and Mintay. Now let's switch to the Pacific. There too are these players who fill an entire nation with pride, who give hope to the entire youth. Today we talk about the very special path of Brian Keltek and Rafael Leal. Football inspires enthusiasms around the world. The superstars are revered around the globe. And then there are those very special stories, these heroes of their country, the inspiration, source of hope, and they also exist in the Pacific. In the new video of the series, I talk about Brian Keltek from Vanuatu and Rafael Leai from the Solomon Islands. Let me know in the comments which players you would like me to cover next. And we start with the defender, who is now one of the best in the A-League and has reached a level that no player from Vanuatu has ever reached before him. Brian Keltek, now 30 years old. Here is his story. Brian is, as I said, from the Pacific island of Vanuatu. A little more specific, from Arako Island, on the outskirts of the capital Port Vila. It is about 5 kilometers away from Port Vila and has a length of about 600 meters. And right there is a football family that is known throughout Vanuatu, the Caltex. Brian's father, Timothy, national player. The grandfather, national player and already active as a footballer in Tahiti. So the path was mapped out and Brian followed it. He was already playing football at the age of seven. His daily routine back then, school, then just a few meters further onto the football pitch, then swimming in the sea. Sounds like the perfect view? Yes and no. The region is not exactly known for its economic strength. The children had to play barefoot and only after some time were there three pairs of football boots for 20 children in Aracor. Sometimes Brian only played with one shoe and still stood out. He wanted to be like his great role model, Ronaldinho. He started to play for Eraco Golden Star and the club quickly realized that the boy had inherited the talent of his ancestors. It is one of the most famous clubs in the country and has even competed in the French Cup in its history. And yet the unthinkable happened in 2009. Golden Star was relegated from the Premier League. Many players left the club. But there was also an opportunity in the adversity. The club's good youth. Many players moved up to the first team including 15-year-old Brian Keltek. The young players celebrated success and Keltek once again stood out in particular. At the age of 17, he was part of the first class to learn at the Football Association's Football Academy, which was founded by FIFA. He also took part in international tournaments and was discovered there. His reward was a six-month scholarship to New Zealand. There, in July 2011, he was allowed to take part in training sessions at A-League club Wellington Phoenix and play for Waterside Karori, a team from a suburb of Wellington. The Oceania Football Confederation even supported him with the costs. However, Brian was not yet completely ready for the big step permanently and returned to the Pacific region. A tour of the countries began in fast forward. He played for Hekari United in Papua New Guinea, then the Solomon Warriors, and in between he once and again returned back to Vanuatu. This was also the case in March 2015, when he was training with his youth club and a storm was brewing. But it was not just any storm, it was the worst in the country's history. Tropical cyclone Pam hit the coast very hard and their entire community lost almost everything. The eye of the storm passed over Caltech's village, reaching incredible wind speeds. Crops were destroyed, entire roads were torn away, but Brian and his family survived. Fate still had something in store for the talented footballer. There was not much left, and so a group of donors even came together to finance new football boots for Celtic in May 2015 so that he could take part in the Pacific Games with his country's under-23 team. Celtic continued to tour the Pacific region, playing for the Solomon Warriors again. In 2016, he then met a man who would become very important for his future career, Josh Smith. He was working as a technical advisor at the Vanuatu Football Association at the time and was impressed by Celtic keeping him on his radar. Celtic returned to New Zealand in 2017, first playing for Wairarapa United and then for Tasman United. One final move to the Pacific, to Fiji, then finally the big move in the summer of 2018. And it caused a stir throughout Vanuatu. 
He signed for New Zealand's top club, Auckland City FC. With even OFC president Lambert Maltok describing it as a historic event for the country after 38 years of independence. It became official in October 2018. Caltech said, It's a dream move for me, because people back in Vanuatu know all about Auckland City FC and what they've achieved over a long period. And he finally arrived, staying with a team for longer, until 2022. In 2020, he quickly became the first player from Vanuatu to win the New Zealand Football Championship. He already had his legendary status back then, but there was more to come. In April 2022, he was given the chance to complete a trial training session with the Central Coast Mariners in the A-League season final. But how was that possible? We remember Josh Smith, whom he had met in 2016. He was now working as a consultant for the Mariners and gave coach Nick Montgomery the decisive tip. Monty gave him the chance and was thoroughly impressed. But fate had another setback in store. Caltech injured his knee in training and had to take several weeks off, just as he was about to enter the crucial contract phase. The Mariners sent him off with the task of getting fit, but kept in touch. Opportunity over? No. He ended up at FK Beograd in New Zealand and worked his way back there. He hadn't dared to hope for it himself, but a little later he got a second chance with the Mariners. Caltech comments. Honestly, the situation where I am and my age, any other coach wouldn't give me a chance. But Monty, it's different. He sees something in me that he wanted. I'm just grateful. In September 2022, the time had finally come and he was given a contract. He made his debut on the 16th of October 2022 and the whole of Vanuatu cheered him on. Although he struggled with red cards at the beginning, he became increasingly important. In January 2023, his strong performances were rewarded and he signed a contract until the end of the 24-25 season. And the fairy tale got the happy ending it deserved. Caltech made it to the 2023 A-League Grand Final and was part of the team that celebrated an incredible 6-1 victory over Melbourne City to lift the trophy. After the game, he was even congratulated and honored by Vanuatu's Prime Minister Ismail Kalshakao, who had flown to the game especially for Caltech. The boy, who dreamed of playing like Ronaldinho, had himself become a role model for the new generation in Vanuatu. Everyone there now wants to be like Brian Caltech. This season, he is once again an undisputed regular for the Mariners, who are having another strong season. Brian Caltech a player for the history books of his country. Rafael Leai also wants to achieve this status for the Solomon Islands. From a very young age, the country has had high hopes for his talent, hoping to get a big star. And his path is also special, even leading him to Europe. The outcome is open. But let's start from the beginning. He was born in the capital Honiara in 2003. He grew up in a small village and started playing futsal. His special talent quickly became apparent. He was simply unstoppable on the pitch. Fast, tricky, the little boy was unstoppable. In 2017, at the age of 14, he was already playing futsal with the big boys and was able to hold his own. With the Marist futsal team, he made it to the final of the futsal championship in the country. Futsal plays a major role in the country and so Rafael naturally stood out. He also stood out on the football pitch. He scored seven goals in the OFC Under-16 Championship and led his team to the final. Second place also meant a ticket to next year's Under-17 World Cup. In October 2018, he was part of the Solomon Islands national youth team that took part in the Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires in futsal. He scored seven goals in the first three games and topped the goal-scoring charts. The team was then eliminated, but Rafael had made an impression. He received an offer for a trial in Argentina from Deportivo Godoy Cruz. He also had an offer for a trial with the Brisbane Roars from the A-League. Everyone believed in the great talent that was making such a big splash on the futsal court. Due to FIFA regulations, however, he was unable to attend the trials and continued to make a name for himself on the Solomon Islands. 2019 was another important year with important events. He traveled to the Under-17 World Cup, where he was able to compete on the big stage with talents from all over the world for the first time. Before that, in February, he was awarded a scholarship at Scots College in New Zealand, where he also played in the Wellington Phoenix Youth Academy. One of his predecessors there was Sarpet Singh, who had moved to FC Bayern in Germany. 
so the academy was in focus. During the college break, he then played in the Telekom Solomon League again and scored as he pleased. Shortly before the World Cup, he picked up an important award in New Zealand. He won the Golden Boot with 9 goals in the college championship. Off he went to the World Cup. However, this was disappointing with 3 clear defeats and no goals of his own. The domestic league was almost too small for him. In the 1920 season, he scored 24 times in 7 games and also won the Golden Boot here, despite the small numbers of games. He scored 11 goals in a match against Real Kakamora. In February 2020, he made his debut for the Henderson Eels in the Champions League and scored on his debut. He even turned down the trial with the Wellington Phoenix to take part in this match. In September 2021, he then took part in the Futsa World Cup in Lithuania with the Solomon Islands. But it came as a shock. He broke his arm and had to take a break. He then celebrated his comeback with the national team in November of that year, this time on the pitch. This also gave him a little time to get into top form for the World Cup qualifying tournament in Qatar. It was no surprise that he was then called up to the squad. Many scouts from all over the world had him on their radar. The tournament was dominated by COVID, but that didn't stop Rafael from attracting attention. In the decisive group match against Tahiti, he scored all three goals to secure a group victory for the Solomon Islands. He also scored in the semi-final against Papua New Guinea and was now in the grand final against New Zealand. Perhaps the biggest chance in the country's history. But the big favorites were unbeatable, 0-5. 19-year-old Leai had nevertheless attracted attention. And so he was given a unique opportunity to embark on the European adventure. A step that no player from his home country had ever dared to take before. He landed in Turkey in August 2022, but visa problems meant that he was unable to complete the planned trial. Game over for the big dream? Not here either. The new destination? Bosnia-Herzegovina. A minor league in the Balkans, but also a great opportunity to make the leap to Europe. He was allowed to attend a trial training session. Everything worked out with the paperwork and he delighted the fans. They demanded his signing and at the end of January the time had come. Little Rafael was big, bigger than any player from his home country before him. And he got off to a good start, scoring his first goal for the new team in May and showing impressive jubilation. However, there were soon reports that he was homesick and not happy in Bosnia despite having a valid contract until mid-2024. In August, he traveled back home for the first time to take part in the Olympic qualifiers with the Solomon Islands under-23s. But once again, there were visa problems. He missed the tournament and his country missed the Olympics. He stayed in his home country and then took part in the MSG Prime Minister's Cup in New Caledonia with the national team. Back in Oceania, he showed his great talent again. In the first match against Papua New Guinea, he scored all three goals in a 3-1 victory and followed this up against New Caledonia. In the end, Leai was the top scorer. The next proof, together with Roy Krishna, he is the best attacking player in the Pacific region. But the situation was unclear. Was he still under contract with Mostar or had differences over finances and homesickness led to a quick separation? The rumor mill was churning. Leai stayed in the Solomon Islands for the time being because the next big event was coming up, the Pacific Games, in his home country. And he shoot his team into the final with a goal where New Caledonia was waiting again. It went all the way to the penalty shootout where Leai scored, but New Caledonia won 7-6, a bitter setback. On the 15th of February, a report appeared in the Solomon Star newspaper stating that Rafael Leai was still a player for Welles Mostar. His contact there is still valid. Hudson Vakio, the owner of Leai's former club Henderson Eels, is named as the source. He was asked whether Rafael would play for the Eels again in 2024. But he is no longer in the squad on the Mostar club website and is often listed online as being without a club. I inquired with the club, but I didn't receive an answer, so I can only assume that he still has a FIFA valid contract in Bosnia but is currently in his home country and first had to get clearance to play in his home league again. He is currently showing off in the Pacific Oz Sports Futsal Series 2024, as pictures show. So it's still a journey full of ups and downs. Rafael hasn't got the happy ending like Caltech yet, but if Caltech's story has proved one thing, 
It's never too late to believe in the big dream. And Raphael already made history with his contract and goals in Europe anyway. It remains exciting to see how things will continue for Lei. I hope you enjoyed the video. I would be thankful if you subscribe to the channel. Feel free to write in the comments which players you would like me to introduce next. See you soon.